You're going to die soon, and everything you love will fall apart. Whoa, 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 I'm not behind you or anything. Right now, we're confronting the inevitable end of our story. We're confronting death. We're taking a minute to reflect on all the warm bodies that will die between now and the end of the universe. I made this video because I see in myself and in my species a fear of confronting the truth. So I'm going to ruin the endings of your favorite stories because I'm cool like that. The first story to end will be the story of your life. The second ending is the death of everybody that we know. The third ending, all life on earth ends. The fourth ending is the destruction of the earth itself. What I call the fifth ending will be the dismantlement of the solar system. The sixth ending will be the collapse of the galaxy, what's left of it, into a single black hole which will evaporate. And the seventh ending will be the death of the universe. Really, there's only one ending seven times, because every one of these stories, every one of these seven endings is an ending of death, darkness, silence. Now I know, it's heavy, but that's our challenge to rationalize within the confines of science, to build a worldview, a narrative, that allows us some peace without denying reality. So what do you bet is going to happen to an animal like me when I die? The scientific bet is a bit atheistic, a bit nihilistic. It's that death is exactly what it looks like. Me, I'm Jesse D, and I'm an animal. Animals die, I'm going to die. Sucks to be me. Humanists place their bet according to science, so I won't be speaking to all the other possibilities that we can think about and all the other worldviews. Everything is reasonable. You can believe whatever you want, really. Humanists can sympathize with our religious brothers and sisters who use their gut a little more and bet that death actually leads to afterlife. Okay, so I'm politely telling my religious brothers and sisters that I completely disagree. Humanists bet that death is real. Real in the sense that when you die, your eyes will not see, your ears will not hear. Put another way, what it means to be you will no longer be. The world as you know it ends. For perspective, we're going to keep track of the scales of these endings. You and I die on time scales expressed as 1 times 10 to the power of 1. That means tens. That means it's a number expressed with a single zero. For perspective, we're going to be counting the zeros. The first ending occurs on scales of 1 zero. Okay, so the point is that at the end of our story, we die. Now the second ending is that over hundreds of years, a number expressed with two zeros, all the cool people die. The point is that if you think about anything that you love, the punchline is that it dies. Each of us living has our burdens. I'm relatively privileged, I'm lucky, but one of my burdens is depression. And by the time we get to the second endings, I often feel the weight of these stories. Luckily, the scientific method doesn't just identify the problems, it often gives us ideas and solutions. For example, eating right and exercising is a way to prolong and improve the quality of life. The science of happiness, positive psychology, gives us more ideas on how to make the lives of our loved ones and our own lives more fun, more interesting, more meaningful. Consider how little time we have in the sun. Consider how little time we have to share love. Why would we privilege 
only a few people based on skin color or gender or sexual orientation. Life is too short for that dumb shit. Anyway, I think we get perspective, even from the second ending. As we move on towards the rest of the seven endings, the science becomes even more uncertain. Along the way, on timescales expressed with three zeros, so-called thousands, the human race could destroy itself. We could nuke ourselves. We could unleash a virus. Or we could just keep doing what we're already doing, trying to deny the seven endings, deny death, not think about the future, and inflict global warming on children real children of the future who suffer for our neglect. We're starting to get on larger timescales by four zeros, Niagara Falls and large waterfalls wear themselves out. By this scale, we're entering ice ages. These are tough times for humanity. Hopefully by tens of thousands of years, humanists have managed to get a lot of good ideas into the mainstream. Good ideas like nonviolent communication, ideas like Occam's razor, I think it's easy to believe that a human race that doesn't have these big ideas in the mainstream isn't going to be equipped to survive ice ages. I'm not even going to get started on the sex negativity in our species. By five zeros, the stars in the sky have moved and all of the constellations change. At the scale of eight zeros, we might get struck by a meteorite, like the one that wiped out the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. A lot happens on the scale of eight zeros. We could also encounter a supernova if a star nearby to our sun explodes. Any of these would be global killers. And on these scales, the sun is increasing in luminosity. That will harden the rock on the Earth's surface. Hardened rock means hardened volcanoes and interrupted plate tectonics. That means the carbon dioxide is not getting cycled into the atmosphere. No carbon dioxide means plant life, precious plant life, dies. With the death of plants, everything else dies. Nearly all multicellular life perishes. It would be so cool if I could end this video by saying, surprise, there's no death. This is what I'm calling the third ending. The death of all life on Earth, when the sun increases in luminosity and kills all plants and all life. Moving on, a lot of things happen on the way to the fourth ending. Now don't get me wrong, I'm just weaving a narrative, I'm just telling a story. The evidence for each part of this story is something that you have to look up on Wikipedia. On the scale of nine zeros, our galaxy, the Milky Way, and another galaxy, Andromeda, are going to collide. Now you might think that colliding galaxies is pretty horrifying, but it's not so bad, it won't hurt. The end result will be a single galaxy called Milk Dromeda. Before that, Earth will become unstable and lose its magnetosphere. This will cause the planet to become like an oven, like Venus is today. If the second ending is still dragging on, if there are still single-celled organisms, they will now be wiped out. Maybe by then, life has escaped Earth. Maybe there is intelligent life now in space waiting until one of Saturn's moons becomes habitable, like Titan. But I will say this, if we escaped Earth, it was because we were prepared, because we cherished Earth's resources, because we rationed, and because we saved. To me, sustainability is another reason that humanists organize. On timescales expressed with nine zeros, the sun has continued to age, it has grown to become a red giant that will probably devour the Earth itself. And that is our fourth ending.
Now, this is why we're counting the zeros, because we're moving through huge amounts of time. At 10 zeros, there could be a big rip. There's a slight scientific possibility that the universe will collapse. On scales of 11 zeros, our merged galaxy, Milk Dromeda, joins all the other neighboring galaxies to form a single galaxy, what we could call the last galaxy. We could call this giant galaxy the last galaxy because the galaxies nearby merged, but the galaxies that are far away moved further away. Space is expanding and eventually it will expand to the point where the light from the further galaxies cannot reach us. This is called the cosmological horizon. And on the scale of 12 zeros, the cosmic microwave background radiation won't be able to reach us either. Now the crazy thing about a cosmological horizon is that the speed of light isn't outrunning the speed of the growth of space. When we look out past the closest stars, we will see only darkness. And actually, if another species of life wakes up in the universe at this time, they might look out into space and believe that all the universe is just a galaxy. They'll never know what we saw in the first place. Around 14 zeros, new stars are not being created, and so we leave the Stelliferous Era and enter what is called the Degenerate Era. By 15 zeros, even our own sun has grown cold. It is on this scale that another star will pass nearby our sun, scattering all of the planets. And so the fellowship of satellites that we grew up naming will finally be disbanded. Pluto will finally have its revenge. Huge amounts of time now. Jesse D is dead, you're dead, everybody that we know is dead. All of life on Earth has ended and the Earth itself has been destroyed. And in fact, the solar system has been disbanded. Around 19 zeros, most of the last galaxy is flung out into space. Only about 10% of the last galaxy collapses in to form the last black hole. This last black hole mostly just chills. At 36 zeros, atoms scattered around the universe, the once proud building blocks of stuff, are degenerating. Oh my god, I love the scientific method so much. At scales of time that you can express as 1 times 10 to the power of 43, at scales of time expressed with 43 zeros, the black hole era has begun. There are no more stars, no more planets, no more asteroids nothing but black holes, slowly evaporating. Soon after a scale of time expressed with a hundred zeros, the last black hole evaporates. Okay, so, if you want to worry, if you want to brood, you don't just think about what you could be worrying about tomorrow, don't just worry about next week, don't just worry about ten years from now. There is scales of time expressed with hundreds of zeros, or even the last black hole evaporates into darkness. Now, if you want to obsess about things beyond your control, there is a vast expanding darkness for you. The sixth ending is the death of the last black hole. And that brings us to the seventh ending. Long after the death of the last black hole, we reach a state of maximal entropy, a state called heat death, where all warm bodies have died. A lonely photon, a particle of light, or wave, can travel through space for the rest of its life and never encounter anything else. The time scales of this darkness are hard to understand. We're not talking about 1 times 10 to the power of 100. We're talking about 1 times 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 50. So our zero counter 
is broken. Think of it another way. The sixth ending was the death of the black hole on a time scale of a hundred zeros. Let's express that whole story and that whole ending all the way up to the sixth ending as the letter B on a piece of paper. The question becomes, how long will the seventh ending take? How much more paper do you have to use to express the story of the dark, silent universe? Well, if your letter B is the sixth ending, is the last black hole, you could fill an entire house, and it's not enough. You could fill the earth with paper, and it's not enough. So we do some arithmetic, and we find that the story of the universe is so long that to write it out, you would actually need to fill the whole universe with paper. And then you would need even more universes. You would have to fill 1 times 10 to the power of about 400 universes. You would have to fill a huge number of universes with paper to write out the story of the rest of the universe. That is the seventh ending. Okay, I'm doing my best with this metaphor about universes and universes full of paper, even though our own black hole was just the first letter. These things are just not made for the human mind. We are a brief moment of light in a long story about darkness. So to recap, one, you die, I die, two, everybody else dies, three, life on earth dies, four, the earth is destroyed, five, the solar system falls apart, six, what's left of the last galaxy collapses into the last black hole, which evaporates, and the seventh ending is the long story of darkness. Whether we are talking about ending number one or ending number seven, the world as we know it comes to an end. So how do we deal? Here's what I think we can take from the seven endings. Here's a narrative that I think fits within the confines of science, the reason that humanists organize. First of all, I think it's pretty clear that science is horrifying and magnificent. Humanists looking to use art to express truth will find no better source of truth than science. I also think that truth is worth disagreeing over. So let's not draw fierce lines around our worldview the way others have. Humanists should dialogue with their religious or apathetic brothers and sisters. I think before the first couple endings, we can see that every human pretty much enjoys food, water, shelter, health care basic education, so humanists should organize to get everybody a little bit of that too. I mean, being born a human doesn't make you a humanist, it's a worldview where you volunteer to combat all the ways that we belittle each other based on body, shape, size, height, color, sex, gender, orientation, ability of body or tech modification, monogamous status, language, age, education, even worldview. Who cares how normal somebody is if they're trying every day to be wiser, kinder, harder working? I think little ideas are fine for a reposing mind, but let's keep getting big ideas out there, ideas worth spreading and sharing and acting on. An idea like sustainability might just help us cherish and sustain the earth well enough to survive ice ages, maybe even to travel off of earth and live elsewhere. This is the perspective that we get if we can bring calm reason to look at the seven endings. All of these things are worth fighting for, but we forget, especially when we're working alone. So if you have found a cause that you care about, join a movement because we need everybody organized. You don't have to be terrified thinking about this stuff all the time. That's my job. So let your mind take you out to space sometimes. Get paralyzed, doubt, hurt, 
but at the end of it come back to us, love and work with us, build a better world with us. There is still a story to tell here. We know that because there are seven endings. You got yours. Mm -mm. No, don't even. <laughs>